Well, thank you for joining us again. We've had a chance to wonder with two of the Psalms this week, to wonder at God's amazing and diverse creation, to remind ourselves that we are made in the image of God, that each one of us has immense possibilities for being creative in our service of God and in our caretaking call of creation. We've also focused on the amazing words of Psalm 148, all of creation worships God from the smallest creature to the largest of stars. This should lead us to worship God, to see God as the centre of everything. So on the one hand, we've seen our significance in being called to be caretakers of God's creation. But we've also seen our insignificance in that all of the cosmos worships the creator with or without our input. And if we fail to see God as the centre of all things and instead put ourselves on the centre in that throne, then we are working against creation. We will contribute to its running out of kilter. We'll continue to twisting the good order into darkness and chaos. We'll continue, continue to damage and ruin the planet and the delicate ecosystems. Well, today we're going to move to the New Testament for our reading and into that amazing chapter in Romans 8. We're going to read Romans 8, 18 to 28. Paul writes this. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole of creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Paul unpacks the gospel in great detail in the first chapters of his letter to the Romans. Now, I don't know if you've ever linked in our call to be caretakers of creation with the gospel if you've linked the two. But for me, Paul does that in his this part of his writing. He links that gospel story into not just our personal salvation, but also our responsibility mm -hmm. for the world around us. Paul says that creation is eagerly waiting, expecting for the children of God to be revealed. Creation is eagerly waiting and expecting for the children of God to be revealed. And Paul says creation was subjected to frustration and is currently groaning as if it was in childbirth. That creation will be liberated from its bondage to decay and find freedom. Let's think about some of those statements. Perhaps they might change or enlighten our perspective. Creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. Doesn't this sound like what the gospel, the good news of Jesus has done for us? Don't we believe that on the cross, Jesus freed us from slavery to sin, from death, and allows us to know the freedom and the glory of God? Isn't Paul saying that our futures and all of creation's futures are tied together? What Jesus has done on the cross isn't just for humankind, but for all of his creation. 
And Paul ties us into it. Creation is eagerly expecting, waiting, groaning in child pains, looking for that new birth. We will one day be like Jesus. That's the promise of the New Testament. And Jesus has already started that renewing work in us. Now, of course, it won't be completed until he returns. But in some amazing way, creation looks at what God has started in us, his work of renewal and recreation. And creation takes hope. Creation sees in us the fallen caretakers of creation, the spark of new life and renewal that it desperately longs for. One writer has said, in God's redeeming mercy, we who cause frustration for our fellow creatures have become a sign of blessing to them instead of a curse. Our fallen humanity speaks of what was lost and our new humanity through Christ speaks of what is to be gained. One day, the return of Christ will usher in a renewed and united heavens and earth. There will be no more tears, no more pain or suffering. And in the meantime, we who belong to Christ are the sign of hope for the rest of creation that that is going to happen. Isn't that all mind-blowing? Well, we have another two days to think more about this. But just a few questions to leave with you and me to think about. How should the way we live and consume in this world change in order for us to be the sign of hope? that Paul talks of. How should the way we live and consume in this world change? And if our futures and creation's futures are tied together, we will be one day fully renewed together in a new heavens and a new earth. Then shouldn't we be better caretakers now? Let's pray for us. We thank you for Paul's amazing writing, for his amazing thinking. We could spend weeks looking at this passage and pondering all that Paul has said. But we thank you that in the book of Romans, Paul makes it very clear that we can find you a new start with Jesus, forgiveness for our sin and our failure. That Jesus came to save us, but we thank you that we have this picture of, of how wide the gospel is, that the gospel, Jesus coming to die, is to save the whole of creation, to renew the heavens and the earth, and that we have a part to play. May we live our lives in the light of all of that good news for the sake of your kingdom, for the sake of your creation. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Surrender.